All right, it is on. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. I wouldn't have my feelings hurt at all if you would just come as far to the front as you can, uh, because what we're supposed to be having here is a conversation, and uh, I think we all have things to contribute to this conversation, so I'd love it if you came up here. Um, I think everybody here knows something about the topic of burnout, and it's been a, a conversation that we've been... I, I guess I should introduce myself. I forgot to, right? I'm Randy Fay. I'm rfay on Drupal.org. And uh, I'm like many of you, kind of a Drupalholic. <laughs> and uh, Drupalholics can have some trouble with, uh, with burnout. So, um, what's that? How long has it been since you Drupaled? How long has it been since you Drupaled? <laughs> Here I am at Drupalholics Anonymous. Yeah, that's right. So, um, just to get to set the stage for what uh, we want to accomplish today, um, we want to just go quickly into understanding what burnout is, kind of as a as a diagnostic, not as a. Uh, it it is a formal area of study. There's formal research about what it means. It's a serious issue in our current world, just in general. You know, it, it has specific characteristics, and there are specific things that can be done about it. And there are ways of looking at it, both from the individual point of view and from the organizational point of view. So one of the most important researchers basically says that burnout is all the fault of the organization. I think we all know that that's not entirely true, but the fact that she has written a whole book to that effect tells us perhaps that we can adjust our organizations to affect how we how we take care of our individuals. So, so we're going to talk about burnout from the individual and the community perspective, and. The big point, the reason that we're having a conversation is to talk about what we as a community can do to prevent, to cure, to deal with this whole thing, okay? So that's the, that's the point of this. Um, yeah, go for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. So burnout, uh, if you're kind enough to be here, you might have read the set of blog entries that I wrote about. Uh, about this that go into more detail than, than we'll go into today. But kind of a formal description would be a state of emotional, mental, physical exhaustion. Um, and you're probably familiar with the can't do anything syndrome from having worked too hard on something for too long that at some points can be quite difficult to recover from. You know, if you run a marathon, you may be sick of the marathon, but probably in a week or so, you'll probably be okay. But it seems that some kinds of burnout can just stalk us and stay with us in a way that we wish they wouldn't. And it can be difficult to, to get our lives back together. Um, so the key researcher on this points to three dimensions of burnout. Exhaustion, um, emotional, physical, uh, cynicism, I think we've seen that in burned out members of our community sometimes, um, where you say, ah, that'll never, oh, that'll never be fixed in Drupal. Ah, you know, no way you're going to get any, you're not, no way, no way you're going to get so-and-so to do that. Move the core directory? Yeah, like move the core directory. <laughs> <laughs> Poor quick sketch is burned out on, and when, when was that issue opened? Two thousand five. I think it might have been two thousand four. Yeah, a long time. It's a uh, so. But uh, on November first, it's going in. So. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, and ineffectiveness is a is a third um, a third dimension. Um, you know, you start to feel like you can't do anything when in reality, you know, you used to do stuff, but. As you begin to feel ineffective, you you don't seem to be able to do it anymore. Um, I'll go ahead and hit that next one if you would, thanks. So I, I actually don't want to minimize what we as individuals should be doing to 
um, to deal with burnout, even though that's not what this conversation is about. I think it's really important for us to recognize that we have responsibilities as individuals for marshalling our own resources. And that's not just for the community, that's for us. So obviously these are very, these are things that your wife or your husband has been telling you over and over again. You know, I mean, these are very obvious things, but it doesn't mean that they're not true. So budget your physical resources, eat good food, get some exercise, get some sleep. Well, and, and, and these may need to be true over the long term. Like I said, sometimes with a marathon, you can recover um, in a week or a day or whatever your recovery period is. But sometimes when you've done some damage to yourself by working too hard, working too intensely, or becoming too emotionally involved with something, um, for some reason it takes a, a lot more time of dealing with these things honestly to, to get that straightened out. Uh, obviously prioritizing, there is a limit to what we can do. We are not infinite and we are going to have to make choices about what we do work on and, and that, you know, it's just obvious. One of the key things that was pointed out in everything I read about burnout was that your social connections are fundamental to maintaining your equi equilibrium. So, uh, we're all doing great socially right here. Um, now we're having a great time with all of our Drupal friends, but a lot of us are can be fairly isolated. You know, you go on IRC, that is not the same as having a close friend. Um, <laughs> it's not the same. Um, and I tend to get most of my social involvement, um, actually most of my social involvement is either through my wife's friends, because she's a good friend maker. We live in a little town and she's done a great job um, in the last couple of years of getting involved with some people there, and I have not. So a lot of my own personal social involvement is, in fact, IRC and DrupalCon. And it's just not gonna, it just doesn't cut it. So uh, anyway, uh, very strongly pointed out in there that you need to have real social activities going, real friendships going on. Um, and I thought that this quote here was absolutely fundamental and that we should all just memorize it. Um, the Scientific American article on burnout said as early as possible in your career, you must absorb, internalize, adopt the idea that your physical and mental health are at least as important as anything you can do seeking success at work. And of course, in this context, work means Drupal community, your modules that you maintain, and blah, 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 whether that's work or not. Um, but that idea of recognizing that you are more valuable than the work that you can do is so fundamental if if you, don't, if you don't keep yourself alive, then you won't be producing anything next year or two years. If you don't keep yourself, it, it, from your own perspective, if you don't take care of yourself this year, you won't be contributing to Drupal next year. It's, it's an easy equation, right? But how many of us really get it? We, you know, we've, we've you probably have screwed up before because you're here, right? I mean, it's just, you know, it's just... wouldn't be listening to you. You definitely wouldn't be listening to me. <laughs> why is he talking about... There was a tweet today. Why is he talking about it? Is something wrong? You know, why is he talking about burnout? Um, okay, thank you. Go ahead and... So, as I went through um, this... Um, this great book by the, by the most important researcher in this field, um, she said a number of really, really important things, and, and I went into those in some more depth, but some of the things that were listed, we feel overloaded. Um, I th that's a, a pretty easy thing as a contributor in the Drupal world uh, to get yourself in that position. Um, 
a lot of us are basically suckers for love, you know. Um, I'm, you know, if somebody, if I do something and somebody says something nice to me, I'm going to do more of it, right? And, and, and if I see something that I can do and that somebody will love me if I do, I'm just a sucker for it. And I think in communities like this, there may be a lot of us out there. Um, well, that very, very quickly leads to overload. Um, and there are many ways that the Drupal community is maybe worse than that, worse than some other situations. Um, because I can see that I, this needs to be done, therefore I could do it, and this needs to be done, therefore I could do it. And we have to figure out a way to deal with that as a, as a community. Um, one of the classic examples is we have, um, th there's many, many examples like this, but we have some, we have some module creators in our midst. Um, and I think that, I think Quick Sketch would probably be among them, and, and Dave Reed, and Eaton, and a number of other people who are just generating modules. You know, just, I mean, just Dave Reed, we joke about every day, right? I mean, it's like, Every day there's a new module. Well, in the Drupal community, when you create a module, you're actually expected to maintain it. So if you generate things like that, you are going to be overloaded very, very, very quickly. And how to deal with that is one of the things that we have to talk about. A second area of burnout, how organizations can burn out individuals, is the lack of control over what we do. And uh, in this book, it talked a lot about that from a, like a corporate standpoint, where you don't have enough control over your own work. But in the, in the Drupal world, there's so many dimensions of it, you just can hardly stop. You know, it's like if you work on core work, you might be working on an issue that you became interested in in 2004 and haven't been able to figure out a way to get it in yet. Um, you might... Uh, it, you know, you might have worked on, uh, if, if you've worked on core stuff, then you have issues that you wrote up and you solved a year or two ago that haven't yet landed and maybe the, and you have a few that never will. Um, it, it's, it's extremely painful. Um, not being rewarded for our work, we're actually pretty proud in the Drupal community that we do reward people for their work, but all you have to do is talk to a few people and you'll find that not everybody feels that way all the time, um, especially in some of the less visible areas. Um, I think we could find a lot of people who work on the documentation project who don't feel rewarded for what they do. They don't feel acknowledged. Um, they don't feel like what they do is important. There's a whole bunch of different places in the community. And, and even though we've worked on that and we value that, as support is another great example. Um, and there's a, a long-running tragic issue about that right now where even in the issue people are feeling unappreciated. And uh, so even though, I, on this one, even though we claim that we know how to reward uh, ourselves for our work, I don't think we do. And I think that it's easy to find out if you just talk to a few newbies or a few people around that you find that that's not, that we're not as good as we wish we were. Um, the breakdown in community bullet, I find really interesting. I, um, I remember as we were getting close to having Drupal 7 come out, did you remember seeing some core contributors saying horrible things on Twitter like, this will never work and it's all going down in flames and, um, essentially, that's um, it's probably both cause and result of a breakdown in community. You know, where people aren't people are depressed themselves. The community is not working the way it ought to. Uh, people start to snap at each other. Just what you would see in a in a poor morale in a in a shop with poor morale or a family with poor morale. So this whole breakdown in community thing is. Another thing that we have seen happen, and we've seen it happen uh, periodically. I thought the fairness bullet 
uh, that we aren't treated fairly was really interesting. Um, there are lots, if you're going to work in the Drupal community, you actually have to already accept that you're not going to be treated fairly, um, that you're not going to be necessarily acknowledged at the level that you expect or, or that things won't go the way you expect. Um, how many of you as a young contributor, an early contributor to Drupal, were um, treated poorly in IRC or, or yelled at or, you know, I, that was your first experience, Angie, right? Getting jumped in IRC? Um, or, or you posted a patch, you like figured out the whole patch thing, right? You posted a patch and, and then you just get ripped up some one side and down the other. Um, or, from another perspective, you, um, you try to solve a problem and there's no way to figure out how to solve it. You know, it, if, if you take the time to solve a problem in a community as open and as, you know, as soft as Drupal is, Drupal is soft. You can find your way to do things in the Drupal community. There are ways to get things done. But a lot of times, especially when you're new, you don't know how in the world you would do that. Um, so who do I talk to? Well, there's only one answer, right? If you want to get something done, you just talk to WebChick. But that doesn't <laughs> scale very well. Um, <laughs> And in fact, I think there's a whole, I think Eaton has a whole domain, right? WebChick doesn't scale or something like that. Um, <laughs> so that's another area of the whole fairness thing that I, I found really interesting is that because it's not clear who the leaders are or what the roles are, and because the organization is... Um, uh, self-organized rather than having a, a hierarchical or an obvious hierarchical structure. We have some serious issues with that. And I think one of the ways that we have to deal with that is we have to, um, we have to make it more obvious who people are, what roles they play, make it more explicit. You know, um, We have a lot of areas of that with, we think about it in terms of Drupal.org content and users. But it's actually an organizational characteristic that we have to find our way through. And then, of course, uh, the conflicting values thing. Um, we're all geeks with, um, you know, with phones that are on the internet all the time and where we can work as much at home as we work at work if they're not the same place. And how do we sort out what we're doing that is work from what's community work? And are they the same thing? There are so few boundaries in our lives in general. Uh, it's not just the tech issue that lots of people deal with. It's the fact that we are in a community that has something to do with work, that has something to do with hobby. Um, lots of us work at home. We just have all these conflicting values. Um, in addition to, of course, classic conflicting values like can I get this done and at what quality and in what time, which are just standard software type conflicting values. So I think the Drupal community is actually got a number of very explicit uh, and I mean, uh, the, this book just nailed many things about the Drupal community. So let's go on to that next one. How are we doing? We've got 10 minutes left. Well, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. evening and spend the evening with my partner and yep. and I often and I don't generally log on on the weekends and I often feel like uh, guilty about that because it seems like all the work is continuing and no one else has these boundaries so you have you're the only one in the Drupal community that has boundaries <laughs> which basically means you're way too lazy yeah yeah she doesn't do enough I, I can tell you she doesn't do enough <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That that's. Uh, I commend you for doing that, and I try, but I have a long ways to go because 
creating those boundaries and keeping some boundaries is a Who fundamentally knows? important thing. I'm guilty if I work until 5.30 because I'm not spending time with Zach. You are a smart person. <laughs> I, do you give lessons? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. So now I want to, I want to do some brainstorming. I did a blog post with a, a lot more bullets than this, but I'd like to do some brainstorming and have you uh, come up with uh, you know, with some ideas, and we'll we'll scribe those and 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 get get some of those in there. But it's fundamental to us that we have to keep our contributors and keep them healthy. That's us, right? I mean, we're the future of Drupal, or we're going to get replaced by all the newbies. One of the two, right? But wouldn't it be better to have us and the newbies? I think so. We're pretty good. We got Drupal where it is, right? We're We've, we've all been a part of this. It'd be better if we were part of its future as well. If we burn up ourselves, we aren't. So my opinion is that we have to rethink and drop unsustainable processes. We just have to recognize them, and we have to say, this has to be fixed. And um, I can name a number of those. Um, the the handbook is one that's unsustainable. I don't know any way that we can get the handbook ever under control given the, what it is today and its history. So we have to figure out what we can do about that. Um, that uh, that's an example. I, I listed some others. The UX team leads, that's another one. You know, it just, it goes, it goes on and on. The number of things that, oh, uh, that we have that we just, oh, well, we're going to have, at 5.30, we're having a conversation about, uh, about the full project application process, okay, which we tried to do according to our values a year ago, but, well, and two years ago and three years ago, and we have not succeeded in actually doing what our values say we want to do. So we have to do something different. We have to come up with something that we actually do instead of just intending to do. So... I think increasing resources is a great thing. It doesn't always work. There isn't an infinite amount of money in the world. But, you know, with the Drupal.org redesign, it got done with some increased resources. Uh, and, and the Git migration, I don't think, could have succeeded without increased resources. That was, a, that was brilliant. Um, another idea is recycling uh, responsibilities. So I think that the Dave Reeds of the world should be able to drop their modules off in the recycle bin and people who are interested in those modules should be able to pick them up. We have a process like that, but it's much scarier. We call it abandoned modules. And, and it, it's not nice, right? It's like, oh, well, this was a module, and somebody went away and left it, and now it's abandoned. You know? <laughs> um, we need to explicitly recycle responsibilities. We need to make that normal and good um, so that people can move on. I like that. So, so she said, you could make it where you sign up for a new term. So you can make a, you can make a, uh, a commitment to a module, but it has a limit. It's not perpetual. I like it. I like it. Yeah. 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 I think adopt instead of abandon would be a good idea. Yeah. Well, I, I totally agree. So, so Eaton's point is that he got in trouble for giving away a module to somebody that maybe was unknown. But you know, if I don't take care of my module, how am I better from somebody that's unknown? You know? I mean, we just have to deal with that. I, you know, if, if somebody comes along and they're willing to take care of a module and I am not in reality taking care of it, I should give it to them. Yeah. Involved as um, committers and maintainers, and 
this from the get-go and encourage that across my business. If, I, if you can, that's a great idea. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we have to work on that. And we all know if you maintain modules or maintain projects, we all know that there are issues that people come and they're interested for a little while and they go away. And it's not that easy to keep a, a, a smart person invested in a project uh, or documentation or whatever it is that they're working on. But um, I, think, I think just coming up with a way to, I, I heard a couple of great ideas just now about term limit or not term limits, but but signing up for a time limited commitment on 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 a a thing that you do, and explicitly recognizing when you when you can't uh, maintain something and looking for other stuff. So um, rules and rules. I think we're talking about everywhere, and I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the idea is that you need to set expectations and, and maybe move a little more um, gently between maintainers. You know, like we've, we've, um, we should probably let new maintainers in more easily and we should probably take over maintainership of modules more easily, co-maintainership. We should probably let that flow. Even though there's some risk involved, but the risk of us over committing is extremely high and that's what we need to realize is that it's not just a risk that you get some newbie that will screw up the work that you did. There's also the risk that you'll screw yourself up so that you can't contribute in new areas. And you know, there's real opportunity in burnout if you can take somebody who has, has found a way to recycle themselves and restart in a new project, they can do new things with some energy that they couldn't do if they didn't get out of there. So um, civility is a long-term theme of the Drupal community. When we are not civil, we damage the people around us. And that's kind of like that breakdown in community thing. But I think that civility is something that we have to uh, pay attention to. And we've had some Twitter, Twitter escapades lately where people go and pile on and Twitter that probably how they w probably wouldn't in real life. And we probably have to stop piling on and Twitter. Let's stop using Twitter. Yeah, or stop using Twitter. Yeah. Twitter's pretty well established. You might not have noticed that, but. <laughs> But you've already proven that she, she says she's made like 200, only 200, 200 tweets in her life, but she's already proven that she's smarter than we are because she turns off her IRC at five. So, so what else can we do? What else can we do, Larry? Nice, simple, practical one. My first core patch ever. Uh, just not a big patch, just a small little feature addition back in the Drupal 4.7 days, I think. Um, but at that point, you were still small enough. Dries always remembered when he committed a patch to say thank you in the issue queue. After he said it, committed, thanks. He does, he still does he that. He still does that like 98% of the time, and that is very much to his credit. If you maintain a module, please, please, please say thank you every time you commit a patch. Not to mention every time you report an issue. Yeah. 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 That's right. There's some, some maintainers that are very explicit. Thanks for reporting that. Yeah. You know, I, I like that. Yeah, just, um, speaking from when I was yeah, a that's. And, and saying thank you when you commit is a, yeah. Great, yeah, a great influence on civility. And, and if you review a patch that needs some work, I, yeah. I, I review a lot of patches because I'm sort of maintaining the documentation, you know. <laughs> and I actually have some contributors now, which is great. But, you know, they, they make a patch. It's not perfect. The first thing I try to say is, thanks for the patch. It just needs a little work. Yeah. You know? and, and, then, and then go on and try to be constructive in reviewing it, as opposed to saying, this is garbage, you really should have read the specs first, mm -hmm. you know, especially which if I could have said. Yeah. Especially if you're dealing with a newer contributor who's very new, 
That word thank you, is, and the more high profile you are in the community, the more important that is. That, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. Jeff. I, I agree with that. So yeah, uh, one of the things that the Drupal Code of Conduct says very explicitly is that we will step down gracefully. Um, it needs to say a little more. That was all copied from Ubuntu, of course. But I think it needs to say a little bit more. It needs to say, we will step down gracefully, and this is what it might mean, and here's where the recycle bin is, and you're welcome when you come back. You know, so. I, I definitely think where's that. Where's this code of conduct? It's at drupal.org slash DCOC, Drupal Code of Conduct. So, Randy, yeah. Are we done with slides? Should I take notes on this? Yeah, we, yeah if you, we're done, we're done with everything. So we're, we have to move on to the, uh, we have to move on to the, the project review. You know, um, somebody said over there about uh, certain people have to uh, spend a certain amount of time on uh, a contribution, uh, something like that. A, a, a committing to a particular term for uh, responsibility? I think that would probably be detrimental uh, in terms of people coming on who just want to uh, contribute and then, you know, they're happy with the contribution, then they just want to leave it. Um, but there's, uh, asking someone to say they're going to spend like six months maintaining it is unreasonable from a point of view. Yeah, I don't think we're saying that. that so, so his point is that um, we don't we probably can't make everybody commit for a time limit to every responsibility. I don't think anybody was suggesting that. I think they were saying that instead of a perpetual responsibility, module maintenance, for example, should be a time-limited responsibility. doesn't mean that you can't make a single contribution in the queue. I thought there was already a time limit of two weeks before you could give the uh, project to somebody else. Oh, that's the abandoned module yeah, yeah. process, but that's a different thing. If the maintainer is inactive, you can try to take over module if yeah. they stay inactive for two yeah, weeks. Like you a can. Takeover. Yeah, that, that's yeah, it's yeah, it's a, yeah. Anyway, what I think this is an important conversation. I'd like us to continue this conversation throughout the Drupal community and see if we can adjust our processes to with respect to what they do to our people. I think we have to think about that in all of these different angles. And I appreciate you coming and conversing about it. So